Welcome to the Game Changers, everyone. In this 29th episode, we're thrilled to have Michelle and Kate Magshak. I hope I said it right. <laughs> Joining us. We appreciate you all for tuning in once again to be part of the conversation. We are profoundly grateful for the support of Evan Iggy JC and the TSA crew. Uh, in providing us with this platform to engage with incredible individuals in our community. Join us as we delve into the lives and stories of our guests, exploring their deepest secrets, experiences with fantasy football, and much more. The Game Changers is not just a show. It has evolved into a cherished community for us, and we are excited to share this journey with you all. Wendy? Oh my gosh, I'm like so excited. I don't even know what to say right now. Um, thank you guys for being here. But what we wanted to tell you is we are going to take a little break from the Game Changers podcast. Um, you know, Carla works hard. We all work hard. Uh, she's a teacher though. And she kind of mentioned, you know, summer break. And I'm like, you know what? Let's take some time off, get some good mental health going on, spend time with family, friends. So we are going to take an extended vacation from June 19th to July 10th. Um, so we'll be getting uh, ready for an exciting return on the 17th, uh, just in time for all the drafts and the fun of the fantasy football season. So we appreciate everyone understanding. We're going to miss you all, uh, but we will be back and uh, stay tuned for more updates. We'll keep everybody posted and let you know when we're coming back. And Carla, how would you like to introduce our lovely guest? Well, tonight we have the pleasure of welcoming Kate and Michelle to our podcast show. Kate. Former pediatric intensive care nurse, full-time freelancer, fellow host, writer, managing editor at Behind the Steel Curtain. Michelle, NFL researcher and fantasy analyst at NFL Network, co-host of the Ball Blast Fantasy Podcast and the Gold Diggers 49ers Podcast. I'm excited to delve into your fascinating stories from your beginnings in fantasy football to the remarkable journeys that have brought you to where you are today. I first met, I first met you um, on Unwind with Rachel, our monthly women's gathering podcast, where um, your tale of connection through Tinder captivated me. I'm thrilled to have you here with us tonight to share your experiences in the world of fantasy football once more. Ladies, it's great to have you on the show. How are you both doing tonight? We're doing great. We have our mimosa, like we 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 told you before All we right. got in here. <laughs> it's a very large mimosa. You know, we're set for this hour. We're going to be <laughs> hanging out. Excited to be here with you both. I'm excited to delve into any questions you guys may have and just uh, get to talk with you two. Yeah, it's a good good time to hang out. And I'm happy we caught you before your extended vacation, yeah. which has been well earned. So thank you guys for having us <laughs> on. Well, we're, we're so excited to have you too. So, okay, I want to start off like, I don't know where you where you live. Where are you located? Like, you don't have to tell me your town or your street or your address. Like, where <laughs> are you at though? I'm not a stalker, except for Bob Harris. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually located just outside of Houston. Um, we've been a little bit of uh, everywhere. I'm actually from Northeast Ohio originally. Uh, Michelle is from Syracuse, New York. Uh, ended up meeting in Cleveland, Ohio, moving to Florida together to Pittsburgh, and now we're in Houston. So we've lived we've lived several lives uh, over nice. our almost ten years together, but. Yeah, right now, uh, suburb of Houston, enjoying those relatively low house prices here uh, that Texas has to offer. Very nice. I visited That's Texas not too long ago. Man, the streets there are so weird. Like the the roads, they like build up. They just, okay, well, we're out of room. We're just going to build up. And I'm just like, I'm driving up those things and I'm like, oh, this is like a roller coaster, man. That was crazy. But I will say, the food top notch here in Houston. Nice. Good food, good drinks, uh, nice weather. Um, in Pittsburgh, I think we saw probably uh, three total days of sunshine in the three <laughs> years we lived there. Um, so like seeing the sun, it's, it's, a, it's a gift. I, I, I enjoy it. And um, yeah, just bracing ourselves for that. Like, well, on that I know you got 
awesome. Well, and I, and I know you're not not fans of the Texans per se, but they have a lot to be excited for mm-hmm. in Houston, right? Yeah, that's CJ Stroud, Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, yeah. my boy Pink Dell, and then uh, my least favorite running back ever, Joe Mixon, is now in the <laughs> now with the Texans, but it's all right. It'll still be exciting. But you know what? Like the the vibes here are absolutely palpable. Yeah. I mean, it, the level of excitement and the level of engagement right now from their fan base, I feel like they've got to be very excited for that because I I think after the Deshaun Watson era, there was kind of a dip in morale and you would have never guessed that that would have happened based on the level of excitement that they have here throughout the city. So really fun to watch that play out. Yeah. I don't think the Astros are doing too well right now. So no. hey, at least I- <laughs> we try not to talk about that. <laughs> oh, you didn't say that. We asked you if there was anything we couldn't yeah. talk about. <laughs> yeah. That's, you want that's some- one thing. Yes. Off topic. There's a long season. They'll, they'll get yeah. back to. Very true. That's I'm a Cubs cool. fan, so I, I've been there. <laughs> did you did you catch the eclipse a couple of days ago, Kate and Michelle? You know what? We went outside because for some reason I thought it was going to get dark. Um, I don't know yeah. why. I was under this. Assumption. We were not. We weren't in the perfect yeah. line. So, um, but we didn't have the glasses, so we couldn't even look up. But it was super, super cloudy here this day. So I think in Houston, it was a bad spot to be in. Uh, but I saw pictures and heard great stories. Did you guys watch it? It was cloudy yeah. at my place, too. So I got in. I watched it over I the to, <laughs> We didn't get the totality. We didn't get the whole darkness thing. But, you know, you got, we had glasses. We went outside a couple times. It was cool because, you know, when it comes around again, there's a good chance I'm not going to be here to see that. Okay. So I'm like, well, I got to go. I got to, I got to go see it. So yeah, I got to check it out. Now, Indianapolis, that was crazy. That was a good place to be. You could drive in there into Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You could go in there and that's really huge in there. Um, I go to uh, down there a lot for the races and that would have been kind of fun because they did have the total darkness there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that would be cool it was not cool here i do think we were probably i think we're about three hours out of like the total um what do they call it? like the total eclipse sort of trajectory yeah but i mean my um my cousin's husband his family owns land up in the pathway of the eclipse and they were selling parking spots for a thousand dollars and what? i mean i have to imagine that that's like the opportunity of a lifetime if you own land in those spots because you're you're charging for right you're money, not going to get it for another 20 years did yeah, he sell on advantage, advantage, so. just, just on the side did he really sell like the spots i have no idea but like he sent the there was a facebook listing he was like these people that's are wild so funny. So, you know what? I hope they sold. I hope they sold. I do too. Me too. That's amazing. I've always said, like, the best passive income in the world has to be owning a parking lot. Like, if I could do it all over again, buy a bunch (laughs) of land (laughs) and build parking lots ever. It's the best form of income in the world. And I'm so jealous of for the amount of money that I've spent on parking in my adult life. Like, it's it's fairly low maintenance, right? Yes, passive income, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Like you're you're here for our our weird fantasy football story, but you stay for the weird life hacks <laughs> that we're trying to discuss. In New York is like so high. It's crazy. Yes. I can't I can't believe it. So um guys, um Talking about your podcasting experiences, can you share some challenges you faced in broadcasting world and what has been the most rewarding part of hosting your podcast? Oh, honestly, I think the biggest challenge in, in hosting a podcast and keeping it going is just like keeping consistency, <laughs> consistency yeah. and keeping things going when you have a million different, you know, things going on. And I think Actually, we were probably more consistent and better at this when we weren't in the industry. But I think when we became full time, it became so much more difficult to find that extra time and and squeeze in that extra time. Um, You know, we started our podcast several, several years ago, I think five years ago now. I think in 2018. Yeah. And that was sort of our rise. But, you know, we had this whole journey with our podcast and then to keep it going once we kind of achieved a lot of our goals was a a challenging point. But 
I'll say and, this season, we definitely struggled with consistency with yeah. the Bob Last podcast. And you can see it with like, you know, with the views and because mm -hmm. people are more likely to come if they know what they get to expect. But Kate mm -hmm. and I both do um, separate locked on fantasy football podcasts now. And those are every single day. So with doing yeah. those, each of us, and then also the ball blast, we kind of let that slip a little bit where we weren't as consistent. And that's huge to the viewers. I think that's definitely the number one key with podcasting. Yeah. Thank you for um, for the, saying that. Everyone is uh, talking about podcast, Rachel and uh, JC. They're talking about your show. And that means so much. And I, I think that... I love our ball blast show. It's just about getting that time, you know, figuring out the time and being consistent with it. It's definitely something that and actually, we need to work on getting better at. Something else that I have realized is sort of a challenge is finding different ways to like, you know, I, I do the PFF fantasy podcast. I do my daily dynasty podcast. It becomes really hard to not like it, to find different ways to approach fantasy football to make each show a unique one and not... Yeah not re like you're not just saying the same thing yeah show, like yeah. to reap uh, the challenge i think also like when you're doing a lot of podcasts is figuring out how to repackage information and it, always make sure that somebody's learning something new even though maybe the stats aren't changing necessarily in a given week but finding new ways to package that information so that people are always walking away with something and that's definitely a challenge the more the more gigs you pick up, the more podcasts you're on is just figuring out how to differentiate between those for your listeners. Do you incorporate any like uh, listening, uh, listener feedback into your podcast? Honestly, we, we probably don't get as much uh, now that at least for Ball Blast. We did a lot in the beginning, uh, listener yeah. feedback and what they wanted to hear. And uh, we definitely were much better at that in the beginning. But now that we've been in it for five years, I feel like people know what to expect mostly from the episodes. So there's less feedback in terms of like what they want to hear. They kind of know what we're going to give them. Um, yeah. But definitely something that we could work on for our other podcast, probably. I do think that like, you know, reading through YouTube comments and reviews, like, honestly, it, it's kind of challenging because a lot of times the people that are driven to leave comments and leave reviews sometimes don't always have the nicest things to say, which, mm -hmm. you know, like we've all been to that point where like, it's kind of like Yelp, right? Like it's, it's yeah. hard to look at Yelp sometimes and you have to take it with a grain of salt because, you know, sometimes people are more driven to give feedback when it's not necessarily positive, positive. and then more emotionally charged. Um, but I do think that like every, every nugget that you can take away from whether it be a review, a, a comment or, um, and not necessarily even uh, like the content of these these comments, but like the specific like what are they commenting on and and trying to look at those trends to see what are people responsive to, I think can be immensely helpful for like self-evaluation in particular. Yeah. Did you ever have like any interesting or like any suggestion from any listener ever for your podcast? Um, I'm sure. Um, it's a great question. That is a good question. Um, I, I will say, actually, we never did this on Ball Blast. But one listener suggestion that we got a lot for Ball Blast was like, when are you going to do video? And yeah. I will oh. say that's something that we never did. We never approached video content with Ball Blast. And I'm going to be honest. It's because I hate being on camera. I, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not on it every single day. Yeah, are. Are. yeah. And, and that was something that like I had to get extremely used to and more comfortable with was being on camera. Always been a huge struggle of mine. So that was like feedback that people want to see your faces. People will connect to yeah. you more if they see your faces and get to know you better as a person. And that is something that I kind of wish I had been more receptive to like it, from the beginning, obviously YouTube is a, a huge resource to connect with your, your listeners, your watchers, like, and, and really have people connect with you and not just your voice. And 
I just I never got to that comfort level with ball blast before being it was also like it. yeah we've been forced into it now with our other podcast where we have to get ready every day to be on camera but I think that was also the thing with ball blast we we're like well we could do video but then we'd have to go do our makeup and make ourselves look good and then you your know, pajamas yeah <laughs> nobody <laughs> talks I, I will say nobody talks about that like a, a, a lot as women podcasters but you know, I'll, I, I record this show for Lockdown Dynasty every single day, right? And my co-host is a guy and he's he's perfect. He's ready. He's drop, drop of the hat ready. <laughs> and he's like, hey, are you ready to record right now? Like, can you record like 20 minutes early? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No. <laughs> no, I can't. And then, this does not just, I just happen. from the gym. And, <laughs> yeah. So like I, yeah, I was like, you know, I it does require, I think, a lot more like even going to the gym and stuff like that. Yes. Like it requires a lot more strategic planning than I, I think sometimes for men. And I'm not saying that men have it easy, <laughs> but like it's, it's so much sometimes that like, you're not just juggling the podcast in the prep. You're juggling how to work that in with your schedule and the workout and getting ready and doing your hair. And I do think that that was probably like a big part of why we never, ended up doing video yeah. content because like it's a lot it is a lot you know i and i agree with you look perfect yeah yeah i totally agree with you like i have i don't like seeing i i go back and i watch myself which i hate doing it you do that's not me oh my god that's not me you know I'm like that's not i don't sound like that i'm like when i walked out of the bathroom tonight i didn't look like this in my bathroom mirror okay and i'm just like so but you know what it is what it is so i don't you know but i agree with that that that's something that but i've never done what what you ladies do you know we, we're just here to have fun and get to know you and you know stuff like that i mean your stuff you gotta you gotta know what you're talking about when we're just here to have fun you know and and get to know you so speaking well, of getting to know i have a question yeah and i think the people want to know too can you explain how you two met please oh yeah so well, carly <laughs> you you teased it at the top we met I, on tinder I, we met on tinder 10 years ago yeah um, so, so tinder was a thing 10 years ago i yeah. didn't know this yeah. okay. I, like I gotta, I gotta, like I gotta take notes i gotta take notes i'm ready okay how yeah, does this work OGs. i swiped right on two women um on tinder my entire life and one of them was her and she settled so quick she was like <laughs> done I yeah I don't know who the other girl was. I was the only one that doesn't she matter. Out. Yeah. She didn't swipe right back on me apparently, or she didn't write me if she did. Um, Kate wrote me. And, I slid into the DMs. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> it was. So uh, is that how that works? You can do that. That's what what happens. That's well, once you both match, then yeah. you can message each other. So like oh, okay. I swiped right on her, and it, it she swiped right on me, and I was sitting in a Barnes and Noble when I got this notification. I was reading, Aww. and I was like, "This little cutie," and I slid into her DMs. We started talking. We probably talked for like two months. Two months. Met. Yeah, and we ended now, where up. Where was meeting. this at? Where were you at? Where were you living Cleveland. at the time? Okay. Yeah, I was living downtown Cleveland. She was living right outside of Cleveland. Um, I was living in downtown Cleveland. Oh, well, like. 10 minutes. I mean, you were in downtown, downtown. I was living in Cleveland Heights, which she, was, is, uh, she lived like Heights. 10 minutes from the city. I lived in the city, which was like really cool. I lived in Shaker Heights, which is very like, 10 minutes. Up. Yes. Very close on the city line. But um, uh, we Cleveland or Shaker Heights produced the Kelsey brothers. So you're welcome. Uh, um, <laughs> that's where I was living uh, at the time. But we met and honestly, like at that point, just I, I feel like we clicked yeah right what's away. so weird our first what five years of our relationship we didn't do anything in this industry right like she was a nurse I did multiple jobs I start what was I when we first met a uh, recruiter no I was an HR man manager. oh you were an HR, HR lead yeah Ooh, terrible job uh HR lead that I hated and then <laughs> I moved and then I was a recruiter and then I became a high school math teacher for a year and a half that was the worst and then i went back nice. <laughs> yeah. this girl literally woke up one january morning and said i think i want to be a teacher i was an algebra teacher for a year and a half yeah a high school algebra teacher and that is florida i want to know why the worst because i'm a teacher yeah. <laughs> so what uh, happened? 
<laughs> well, I think you probably already know why it's the worst. What grade do you teach? High school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just say, I mean, like Michelle literally woke up one day and said, I'm going to be a teacher. And I, think I had no training. We, yeah. And they really just threw me in there. And I was just over my head. Oh. But also, I was 25 at the time. The kids, you know, took advantage of yes. my youth and it was a lot. It was hard to manage. Um, and they also gave me all the kids who failed the year prior as a first year that teacher. That was what was, was your first year. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, well, thank you for too. giving me all the kids who already <laughs> failed. And I'm somehow supposed to <laughs> fix, them. fix them. But yeah. Um, yeah, anyways, I did that and then recruiting. And then when we were, I was in my recruiting job, that's when we started our podcast and our Twitter pages and built our brand. And then I ended up, you know, yeah, ended up getting an NFL job and then quit the recruiting job and been with the NFL since then. And then that's you amazing. You you lose something, you gain something like better. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's an amazing story though. It's awesome. Yeah, I remember being I in should leave my teaching. <laughs> I go to NFL, maybe. <laughs> well, I do remember there was a time, it was probably when you were teaching. That we were living in Florida, we were sitting on the couch watching NFL Network, and she's like, "My dream is to work at NFL Network someday." And I was oh, like, wow. "Okay, like, sure thing." <laughs> well, I never thought I was going to. I, I, know, I was and, just saying, like, "Oh my!" I didn't actually have a plan to get there. I didn't actually think there was ever going to happen. I was just like, if I ever got to pick a job, like, I would want to work for. No, NFL but Network. we're like, we're watching, you know, Good Morning Football, and and seeing you know these people kind of live the dream of talking about football for a living and then and you, you know, all are living the dream yeah like it sometimes every every moment when you get like stressed about a deadline or yeah. you're you're pressed for time or whatever it, you just have to take one moment and remind yourself that you're talking about football for a living and then it's a really nice trip back down to reality because yes is some dream. days i'm working i'm like oh, i don't want to work today i'm like Michelle, you're writing about fantasy football or not. I, actually, I don't. My job is not about fantasy, but I'm writing about football. Like, come on, like snap out of it. This yeah. is a pretty cool job. You'll be fine. And that gets me through my day. Well, and I'm sure you kind of had, you know, some of the same experiences with being a pediatric intensive care nurse, too. You know, because I'm sure there were very happy times, too, but I'm sure there were super sad times. You they know, are. so. You know, I, I loved being a nurse. I think I was really good at it. I'm going to be honest, talking about football for a living, a lot less stressful. Um, <laughs> who would have thought? But I, you know, I will say, so people always sort of ask about like the heartbreaking moments in pediatric intensive care. And I want to say like, the when I think back to my time as a pediatric intensive care nurse, I do not think of like the struggles. I don't think of the sadness. I think of all the resiliency, like I worked uh, before I became a, a licensed nurse. I worked as a nurse's aide for an adult unit. And let me tell you, like adults are crabby. <laughs> they are unmotivated, like generally speaking. And kids, I mean, when a kid wants to go to the playroom, I mean, they could have a central line hooked up to just about every antibiotic under the sun or like you know, it doesn't matter to them. They just want to go to the playroom and they want to be kids. And yeah. the level of resiliency that I saw from patients and the level of resiliency you saw from their families, like pick you families, Nick you families, they're some of the best families in the entire world because they are so resilient. And I think that's like the, the resounding theme that I take away from that time. Cause like, yeah, it was, it was super stressful, but when you have a kid there, like you would never guess that these kids are sick because they don't know that they're sick. They know that they're kids. And I think that's the coolest thing. And I wish like as an adult, I feel like it's such a valuable reminder of seeing the way that kids bounce back and the way kids approach things mentally. It's so much more. It, it, yeah. Like, why don't, why don't we think like, why do our brains, I feel like the more we age, the more our brains just kind of shrivel. And like, I want to have the kind of resiliency that those kids have because they, they taught me a lot. And you know what though, those families, you know, you, you talk about, you know, their resiliency and, and everything, but I'll tell you what, those families need people like you to survive things like that, you know, and the people that have the attitude that you just, how you just spoke about that. That's what those families need. And thank you for doing all that. Cause that's, 
That's awesome. It was my absolute pleasure. I I had I had a great run as a nurse. I like I I, I do miss it at times. I miss the patients. I miss the families. But again, it. It's pretty cool to talk about football. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you guys, have you encountered any gender biases in the football um, fantasy uh, communities? I literally just got, uh, so I, I did a PFF podcast today. And the first comment on that podcast was, I can't believe you're letting a woman talk about football. The first, <laughs> the first comment, and I actually welcome because we didn't try to Oh, and they said first you ruined video games, and now this. I was like, how did women ruin video uh, games? There's like, going to be trolls. There's what? trolls everywhere. There's trolls, like, and yeah. that's the biggest part about learning. Like, yes, the first couple of years it ate at me, right? When someone would be like, "Get back in the kitchen," or say something stupid <laughs> like that, or like dismiss you for being a woman and then after that you just realize they're stupid trolls and they're just saying it to get something out of you like they just want to see your reaction yeah. like at least she's emotional like that's all they want so that's something i it took me Thank many years know. to learn i've learned it uh, i stopped <laughs> responding to those trolls on twitter speci yeah. specifically but um it's called x now i'll actually. say i think like the worst ones is not even so i don't even care about the people on the internet because there's people on the internet and they're trolls what really annoys me is if we're out and I tell someone I work at NFL Network and oh. I'm a researcher, and then a guy will try to quiz me. And this has happened a couple of times. One you kidding? Play where he like was just trying to quiz He's me. Like, oh, what school did uh, yeah. Elijah Mitchell go to? Yeah, and he, he was just trying to like, and I was like, you don't have to quiz me. Like, I, I like this is my living. Like, this is so weird. Like, and I asked him. I said, would you quiz a man if he told you this? He was like. Yeah. No, I guess not. And I said, "Why are you quizzing me?" That he had a girl. He had a girl on a date with him next to him. And I said, "He's a red flag." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I agree. I like this man is a red flag. Run, run fast. Yes. I honestly think that's probably like one of the more challenging things is not necessarily the haters because a hundred percent, like you can tune them out. It's a, it's a. You have to practice tuning them out. You have to utilize those mute buttons. You have to utilize those block buttons. Like, do not be afraid to clean up your mental space. Cause like, yeah, I go to Twitter for a mental break and to talk about football. Like, I don't get go there to be harassed. So like mute, block, my best friends. Like, I don't, I don't care. Call me weak, whatever. I'm just protecting my mental health. You're not weak. You're not and, weak. I, I do believe people like that, they need this because they are hiding behind something. The, which is you know um the computer or whatever and if they are facing you face to face they would never do it like they would no. never do it and it's it's uh it's something that they they are weak people you're not the weak person because they're saying something it it's about themselves they're not it's not directed to you it's directed on themselves and that's why they attack in the person it's not because of you it's because of them that's yeah. why they're attacking. Well, they always have the they always have yeah. the fake profile. They never have yeah. real they never picture. have a real profile picture. They have like eight numbers at the end of their handle. They every just time. made the profile a week ago. Yeah. And yeah. like that, Five that followers. All, like those are challenging. But I do think probably the biggest challenge is like people kind of like I don't need to answer to people. I already climbed no. my way into this industry and I did it tooth and nail and so like having to explain myself to some Joe Schmo who like we're like casually chatting at a bar and they're like, what do you do for a living? And I tell them I write about football and I don't need the quiz. I already passed the quiz. I passed the <laughs> test with flying colors because I'm being paid to talk about football and you are not. And right. like, so having that sort of mentality, like, well, then prove it. No, I already proved it. I'm like, not going to prove it. Next. Yeah. Yeah. So learning I mean, it's how to different. Yeah, it's different if they say, "Hey, you know, let's talk about football." Oh yeah, just, always. Oh, have have a, a, I mean, yeah. we talk to people all the time about football while we're out talking about yes. football and even debating. Like, I, I'm down to like even if yeah. we agree. Like, just because I work in football doesn't mean that I like my opinion is correct over others. If it's not like, if you're not saying like a fact, right? But if they're just we like, don't always have the same opinion. Yeah, if they're like, "This team's going to be good <laughs> next year," I'm not like, "You're stupid." Like, we just have a conversation. You know, it's when they're like. 
well, yeah, prove that you know football. It, tell me who this player does. Tell me who this player does. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm but not entertaining that. The first guy that or, that you were referring to, he specifically asked you like random teams, like name like their right guard. Yeah, he said name the name, center. Name of the, the centers. Uh, yeah, name the center of the Saints. Name what. And like that to them is knowing sports and that is knowing it. Also, if he was knowing, a Saints fan, but also I even got the answer right. So, but I, it was it just, it doesn't matter if I got the answer right or not. That's not the point. The it was point just is so don't weird. Quiz me. It's, don't quiz me. And also knowing the names of offensive linemen is not knowing ball. And right. it's just, yeah. it's weird. There's a lot of weird energy out there, but honestly, like, there's so much more positive energy. You guys are big creators of those that positive energy. So, like me ranting, I, I don't want to take any Thank anything you. away from all of you who are putting such and positive all, energy. Everyone we're talking about, it's nobody mm. in our industry, right? All yeah. the men oh, yeah. in our industry, all the women, all such supporters, like yeah. amazing supporters. Never got any bad, you know, communication mm-hmm. from them or any mean comments. And I, I do love the women in this industry. I feel like we all try to raise each other. No one's trying to beat the Thank other you. in something. Like the more that we succeed, it's better for the whole group of women. So mm-hmm. it just, right. it's about growing each other. And I think that's how the, I, maybe the men are co- more competitive with the men. I don't, I don't know that side of it, but I feel like the men in the industry really have helped women grow as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then with the positivity, you know, we really need to talk about the women of fantasy football with the the unwind, okay? Because I've, yeah. I've met you guys in there, too. Uh, and how wonderful is that? I look forward to that so much. It's like, if I can make it, I'm going to make it. So, but I do want to ask, I, I think you guys, didn't you guys get to meet up with Rachel? How did that yes. happen? We did. Well, Rachel has our number. Uh, so she texted us saying that she was going on a cruise and it was right out of, um, out of Galveston, Galveston which we live oh, okay. right, in, right about 30 minutes from Galveston, but it's on the way from Houston. We live on the way from Houston to Galveston. So she flew into Houston. Um, so we met her downtown Houston one night at a bar, had some drinks, had some food. Actually, did we have food? just we were starving but i don't think we had food we had we had drinks but we were talking about food a lot because we we're all hungry uh but the food trucks there were not good options yeah they weren't good <laughs> yeah we thought they were like fried pickles and they were something fried but yeah. something weird yeah. i don't know it wasn't the fried pickles <laughs> it was wanted. yeah we didn't we didn't enjoy the food but we very much enjoyed the oh drinks, how cool is that yeah. so we like did you like hang food. out for a couple hours or yeah. yeah it was a great time a few hours we hung out we went to we started at a brewery then we went to uh the bar across the street um it was a great time we really it was loved amazing it. Rachel. yeah rachel's been one of our biggest supporters literally just out of the gate and yeah. honestly one of those people that just uplifts the entire community and yeah i love that she's kind of and the perfect example of people it was plantains yes it was plantains uh yes it was fried plantains and i just wasn't like i'm not a plantains person so that's that's my uh, oh, well, you probably did, wouldn't have liked them then, right? I did really want fried pickles though, so the level of disappointment was just insane. Okay. But like, <laughs> I did really want fried pickles that night too. I don't know why. But if anyone's ever in Houston, hit yeah, us up. hit us up. We're and... always down to go meet for a drink or coffee if you guys don't want. To hey, do you guys yeah. know where? Do, do you know where Shiner is? No, Shiner the Shiner bra. No. Weirdly, we have. Yeah, yeah, it's the bar. It's fridge. the it's the brewery. Because I'm going to be Shiner. visiting down there. People no, love then. Shiner here, but I've yeah. never been to the brewery. Okay, I'm going to be visiting there again. So I don't know how far it is. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe we can yeah. meet somewhere. Hey, wait a minute. What about the expo? Are you guys going to the expo? I don't know. Probably not. Ever since it's gone what? to uh, like, ever since it's gone to Canton or what was it? Canton? No, Canton. The Hall of Fame. The Hall it's of always Fame. Been. Yeah, always Canton. Uh, since the Hall of Fame, I feel like it's a little bit. You know, I don't know. Like, yeah, we went the first few years, and honestly, it was a lot easier for us to go the first few years because we were, uh, we We lived lived right there. Yeah, it was so like it was incredible. It was so small. I can't even picture what it looks like now because I've heard like what they're at the uh, the Hall of Fame. I can't even picture and fathom what it looks like because it's been several years since we've been there, but. Honestly, it's been so much more difficult. Um, last year, we were kind of thinking about going, and then I got—I I had my first industry layoff, which was not great timing. 
I don't know. Well, let's you talk should about come this. this is, year. Is, it up, is it up for negotiations? Because I'd like to throw. <laughs> it's not throw a no. Here. It's not a okay. no. It's not a hundred percent no, but uh, we'll look into That's it. That's not a yes either. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 did you guys I see the, the video, break, break, Tracy? Did you see the video that I posted from the last year's expo? That's Expo? Where I see them. You it's have not. to watch it. Oh no. my gosh, you have to see it. It's so great. You get. I mean, I'm if you take you. an Airbnb, it's not going to be pricey. If you drive, yeah, and it just would be. Drive. Drive. <laughs> That's <laughs> a long drive. Nice and good. Hey, maybe we road trip. We bring the dogs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> F -F and Doggy, Airbnb, you know that would be really yeah. good. Hey, Britt did that. Britt Flynn uh, last year, she they drove from Arkansas. They had an Airbnb because they brought their dog yes. with them. You and her, so her husband fun. came and, you know, they just went back and forth from the Airbnb. So, you know, I, yeah. I really think you should consider it. We will consider it. Yeah, okay. I, did, I mean, both times we went, I had a blast. Oh, it was a fantastic yeah. time. Yeah, but it's so much different now. It's so much different now. We'll all get to meet each other. All the women in the of the of the unwind will get to hang I out. Never met and, you I will guys. say there was too many guys. Uh, I mean, yes. yes so, this is gonna be different because yeah. we were pretty much this the was only a many, Yeah, this was a like, yes. Hello, it was us and Bob's wife. And like that was the that was the <laughs> women oh, at the oh, first there was a little bit. No, at the them. first expo. It, uh, I yeah, think the first I love Bob's wife, by the way. She's amazing. Yeah, she's so nice incredible like yeah. you know it would not happen without her like she's such a i didn't know she was his woman. wife at first she was handing you know the bags and yeah. stuff like <laughs> she's that she's so helpful she's amazing I know. So nice. and then so she sweet. said i'm bob's son's wife and i'm like uh no kidding <laughs> and then we start talking and she's she's awesome and he have his whole family like last year he had i think his parents helping out right wendy I his parents so, yeah. were helping yeah. his cool. kids. Everybody was helping out. It's just, it's it's amazing. You should you should really come. It's, the way it's, it's grown, awesome. like, I mean, yes. year one, it was just in this teeny little like kind of hall that like, wow. to see, and I'm seeing via pictures, but seeing the growth, it's absolutely incredible. And congratulations to Bob. Yeah, and you know what? There's awesome. a lot. There's a lot going on. There is, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. All right. There's a lot going on and you miss a lot of it. Okay. But, and you regret that. We have you Zumba too. You, yeah. You have, no, we don't. We don't. But, yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be Zumba. honest. I tried Zumba once and I was I so play, embarrassed. I, the biggest reason I'd want to go is because I want to play flag football. Oh, I do want to play flag there football. There you go. There you Zumba go. Zumba flag football after it. <laughs> Carla, yes. I... I did Zumba once and I literally was so embarrassed that I never went back and I canceled my membership. Why? I, 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 so about much fun. Life. I promise you, you will have so much fun. Both of my you. hips and it's for like, my hips lie a lot. They do oh, not. I'm sure <laughs> we, we very much enjoyed a workout, but like orange yes. theory, pickleball, kickball. Like We're those. really into pickleball right yeah. now. Um, oh, but I, 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 I don't understand that. What is, how do you play that? What, do you have like a racket? Is this, I don't know. I don't yes. know what pickleball is. Yeah. Small we literally, we went all out. We have, uh, we have paddles. We have, um, we just bought a net yes. today so we can just set it up and sports. Okay. It's like, it's yes. like they have a team. They have a team. All you right, guys can be on team. the team. Yeah. Michelle's right. going to want to be the quarterback. No, but I can throw a really nice ball. <laughs> uh, I won't be quarterback. It's fine. I, I won't make myself do that. I can also catch a ball. But um, maybe. I'm, I'm better at throwing. Anyways, that's not the point. <laughs> what was I talking about? I don't know. You that's were talking about the racquetball, like a picket ball. Yeah, the picket ball. Yeah. So, so if you play tennis or if, have you played um 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 uh, badminton badminton no. what's no the, the table table, uh, ping pong. table tennis ping pong. Ping yes, pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. yes it's like you mix it's those two like together <laughs> it's like you put tennis and ping pong together um yeah. and then that's kind of pickleball but it's yeah, but it's of, it's like you're it's like a uh you're on a court it's though sniper. right like you're yeah you're on a court, court. And yeah. I will say, so it's apparently, it was like branded as a type of like tennis adjacent you have to game try for old people. And I don't know how old people do it because I play 
And well, we play singles. Yeah, we play singles. There's 2v2, which is not much moving. And then singles is a lot of moving. It's a lot. We've been obsessed with pickleball. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. oh my God, if we got a pickleball nice. game together. Oh, we should all play pickleball together if we go to Expo. And FF. Uh, Why not? Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, think... We're going to have a very active weekend if we get, if we get there again. <laughs> Oh, they have the, they don't, they don't have pickleball, but they've got the cornhole thingy. They got to just turn them. I yes. think Tootsie Roll or Tootsie Pop pay, played in that. I don't think she, I don't know if she wants to play again, but if she wanted to, Rachel, I will be your partner. <laughs> I, I I do think cornhole is like the great mid, Midwestern Minnesota. sport. Like I feel like <laughs> all Midwesterns have to play at some point in their lives. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wendy, if you need a sub. On your team with Rachel, I can sub in. Yeah, I'm not know. good at cornhole. <laughs> so you are like ha- like 95 percent coming to the expo, which is we're happy. Oh, wait, we're <laughs> you're already talking about. You're already talking about the what more we talk doing, about, the more excited we get. Yes, we, we, go, we were go this sign close up for draft night it. out. Yeah, we go were sign up for draft night out. So you make sure. Oh well, you, well it's you're gonna be closer. so much fun, especially with the unwind stuff. Like we want to meet up and we want to hang out. It's gonna be and really I saw fun. The, the women's panel, like I saw a lot of clips from the women's yes. panel. A really yep. incredible group of people that that all I admire. Um, just the nice Queen's sport. Classic. You could go watch some of that Queen's Classic. That's like yeah. it's intense in there, man. <laughs> Bloodbath. I, walked, I never watched. I walked that. in so there. And, yeah, I was just like, who? And then the auction drafts, those guys that are doing the auction drafts, holy cow, man. I, I was sweating, and I'm like, all right, I got to get out of here. I, I wasn't even playing. I just was like, wow, this is crazy. But seriously, you guys, you should come, because I yeah. had, when I got there, keep in mind, like, I'm going to know so many more people this year than I did last year. And it was still one of the best weekends of my entire life. I mean, it was it was really great. I know it's... Never going to get that feeling again, I don't think. But, you know, I, I highly recommend it. And I just can't wait, though. Carla and I have never met. We've never met in person. So, wow. yeah, no, yeah. But I'm going to Chicago to change that. So, I'm going. Oh, yeah, there. I'm going to see. She, yeah, I live pretty close to Chicago. So, I'm going to drive out and see her in yes. May. She's coming here. So, that's awesome. Yeah. It is so I weird, though. Been- like, I think this industry in particular and like this kind of cohort of like fantasy Twitter, like it's weird because you have this group of people that are so close. And like, for instance, I met uh, my co-host of the dynasty podcast on Twitter. We did this podcast for like two years. And then we actually met at the last fantasy football expo that I went to. That was the first time we had ever met. And I was like looking at him. I was like, we've never been in the same room. Like this is weird. (laughs) Because, like, it's somebody that I talk to almost every day, like, great friends. We've been through, like, hell and back together. And then you realize, like, oh, we've never shared oxygen. Like, how weird is that? Wow. It's amazing. But you know what? From the moment I I got there, I literally, I'm walking in the door of the Doubletree to go sign in. And I'm walking up and somebody yells, Wendy, early. And I'm like, first of all, someone knows my name? I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> and I look, and it was Howard Bender. Okay, I mean, I, and I had Howard been on a is Zoom the with friendliest him. dude. He's I so know awesome. he's so he's great. Amazing. You know, so immediately I felt welcome, and you know, I went in, did all my stuff, and I'm walking around, and I don't care. I'm looking at people's name tags because I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, now I know who you are. You know, because you don't, you know. But this yeah. year's going to be so much better. But I made sure that I got to meet Rachel. Um, you know, this year though, we're going to be spending a lot more time together, right? Charlene Howard's so great um you know we still yeah he, he's he spent a lot of yeah. time with him there he even bought me breakfast I mean nice. there was a bunch of us right it wasn't just Howard and I that'd be yeah. weird okay <laughs> you go on a date with Howard Wendy <laughs> no I did not <laughs> Deborah would not care for that very much okay <laughs> They, I mean, we're going to start this rumor at the expo. Yeah. <laughs> this is how rumors get started for real. Um, but yes, I, like, I agree. <laughs> all uh, like the, the number of people that are as welcoming though, like, like a Howard, yeah. like a Bob Lung who recognize you, call you by name. Like that is what makes this community. Our first one so we went to fun. Marcus Grant 
Uh, apparently, oh. apparently, I stole his <laughs> Moscow Mule, but I swear oh. he gave it to me. I I swear <laughs> he gave me the Moscow Mule. But um, either way, he still jokes to me this Get day. on it, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> It was, but to this day, he still jokes to me about well, this. And like Andy Berenz, huge Andy Berenz fan. I didn't realize who he was. The first time that I met Andy Berenz, I didn't know he was Andy Berenz. Like I had read his work. I followed him on Twitter. I guess I didn't know what he looks like. And uh, <laughs> Scott, sure, Scott. Scott was there. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Scott bore witness. Like, they, they said, if I could get promised a free breakfast, I'm there. Yeah. Oh, I promise you. I promise <laughs> you no, no, now. No, no, no. I, I don't want a free <laughs> breakfast. I want the free mimosa. Oh. That too. Oh, I promise, I promise too. that too. It's on camera. Everybody go back and watch it. I promise you. I will do that. I'm yeah, tagging along. Was, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to tag along. You're there. You're I'm, there. In the I'm in the double tree. I'm in the double tree. <laughs> so, so kind of explain how you started playing fantasy. Cause I want to say somebody was like 10 years old. Who was this? That was 10 years old playing fantasy. <laughs> yeah, it was me. I was raised in an NFL family. Every Sunday we watched football and it was like not college. So it was just NFL. My parents, huge Steelers fans. So they raised me to be a Steelers fan. I tried to go against them for a couple of years. I tried to be a Rams fan, but they sucked me in. Um, so <laughs> But like when I was around 10, I still had all my siblings living in the house and then it was my two parents. So it was four of us and the two parents of so six together. Every Sunday morning, we would wake up and draft a team. So it wasn't like we did a draft uh, in one draft, but it was every week we did a draft. So the oh, six fun. of us would wake up on Sunday morning, draft our team. Uh, this must have been before okay, so Thursday night football. Actually, you, yeah. oh. Michelle invented underdog. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. Little known uh, fact, so yeah, we'd write down wow. our teams and then we'd calculate them just by hand and we'd see who won at the end of the day or at the end of Monday, I'm guessing. Uh, but my dad did all that. But yeah, we'd wake up every and I was the youngest. So I was only 10 while they're all older doing their drafts. But that's how I started it. And then when I got to like 13, I joined my brother's league, which he's 11 years older than me. So he had this big league. There was an opening. I was like, I want to get in. And I won the very first year that I was in it. So I took down him and his friends. He was quite embarrassed about that. But then I got her into fantasy once we met because this girl didn't watch an ounce of football before we met. No, and like I actually weirdly grew up in a Steelers family. My family, like they were they were Steelers fans, but they weren't crazy football fans. So like luckily all football gear in our house was Steelers themed. So now we've like doubled our Steelers collection. Like if a game was on, they would watch it. Yeah. They if were, a like, game was dying to watch it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, big, like your family conversely dies to like, watch our it. Our entire like, schedule was around the Steelers schedule. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My family just like, if they happen to be on prime time, they would watch. But um, so I never like watch football. Literally the first game that Michelle and I ever watched together, it was about, no, no, no. I'm going to not tell that story. I'm going to tell the first game we ever literally Oh, no. Tell the other story yeah. after this one. There are stories after this one. There are two yes. stories. So the first one, it was when we first started dating. I mean, we're like a month in. And the Steelers were, what, going to make the playoffs or something? They were playing the Bengals. Like, no, we didn't even watch it because you couldn't get it on your That's TV. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. But what was the scenario? <laughs> they had to win to get into the playoffs. Yeah, so Michelle was over at my house, and she's like, I, I'm going to watch the Steelers game if that's okay. And I was like, sure, whatever. Like that was, I didn't have cable. I had um, she said, funny ears. She said that she could get – I was like, well, the Steelers game is on. Do you mind if we have it on in the background? Because we were just starting to date. Like, I didn't – this. and remember – no, I think this was like the first couple of weeks that we were officially dating – I didn't want to be crazy, but then she couldn't get the game on. And this was such an it important was, game. I had bunny ears. Like I had an antenna and I couldn't, I was like, <laughs> but I she don't didn't, know. She didn't even understand how important it was to me. Cause I kind of just let it roll off. I was dying. I think I was just looking at my phone and dying inside. I didn't get to watch it. Um, but it's a huge game. I don't remember if they won or but lost. But she was bugging point. me all night. And I was like, Michelle, like, is it this important to you? And I didn't realize like, yes, yeah. it is this important. And she kind of said it like that too. So I was like, oh no. I guess not. All right. But then fast. So this is the other story. So this is two Please. weeks in, right? Where I go, I guess not. 
then we are still dating come September. Obviously, we were still dating because we're still dating now. Uh, but come September, the next season, now we're nine months in or even more than that, 10 months in. So, so I'm know, stuck. My craziness has already come out in many ways. I, I'm not shy anymore. So I talk about how excited I am for this season to start. The Steelers play on primetime Thursday night. It was Thursday night, right? Thursday night against Thursday the Patriots. Night. It was the season opener. Yeah, season opener, Thursday night. I'm so excited. I she go makes, all out. She makes me all this food. It was very sweet. And she has a game on. Well, the Steelers get their booties kicked. It was the worst game I've ever had. Uh, they got destroyed. And I was a monster. <laughs> so I was livid. And I'm freaking out. And I'm very upset. And she's like, she is shook. Because she's never seen me like this. And she was like, is this how you are during all Steelers games? And I'm like, yes, this is how I am. And but now you're like that with me now. So we're together now in it. Yeah. But um, now you cover the Steelers. Now I cover the Steelers, which honestly, like, such a gift to cover your favorite team until they're not doing well. And then you have to cover your favorite team and write all about it. That's when they're really not. Try and, be really posi- well. and try and be positive, too. Yeah, it's like, it's. It's a blessing and a curse, but like I, you know, after that first season, um, you know, I wasn't like watching, I, I was watching with her, but I wasn't, you know, watching other teams play. I wasn't playing fantasy and Michelle's brother was like, oh, I have an opening in my fantasy football league. And Michelle's like, oh my God, Kate plays fantasy football. She's like an expert. That was not. <laughs> Like I didn't, I didn't know anything about fantasy football. I didn't like, I didn't play fantasy. I barely watched football and Michelle's like, Oh, she, she's so good. And he takes it very, very seriously. You like at that point, especially he was like, no newbies in my league. Like I want serious managers on like he was, he was on one and Michelle really talked it up and he was like, all right, like, let's see what she's got. And I was so scared to be in his league and like disappoint my potential future brother-in-law that I studied for like a whole summer Uh leading up to the draft and I dominate. I made it to the championship in my first season didn't win, but like I was so obsessed and I'm like, I have a very obsessive personality. So once I lock in on something, it's over (laughs) and I locked in on fantasy football and then it was over. <laughs> you did a great job. That's amazing. <laughs> well, who's the 49ers fan? Who's the isn't somebody loves 49ers fan too? Yeah, so I grew up a Steelers fan, but uh, a couple of years ago, like three years ago, I got asked to do this 49ers podcast. Every Friday it was with SB Nation with now my really good friend uh Stats Guerrera, Rob Stats Guerrera. Uh he co-hosts with me, but he does the full week of shows or he produces the full week of shows and then we have a Friday show. Uh, But he just wanted on someone that was like an NFL person. It didn't have to be a 49ers person. He just wanted someone on this Friday show. So she used to work with stats and he asked her like, Hey, do you know of any woman that could, you know, be good in this role. And she was like, well, actually my wife, <laughs> this would be perfect. So anyways, I, you know, talked to him and then I, I started it. Well, now that I've done the show for three years now, They've sucked me in as fans. And yeah. at first I was watching and like I cared a little bit, but not not a but ton. But you were watching more to like get yeah. the content. Yeah. Like and then the more and more I watch. And then then I realized I was I are I was all the way sunk in when the NFC championship game game happened last year and Brock Purdy got hurt. And I started crying. I was oh. like, oh, shoot. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then when they lost the Super Bowl this year, I definitely um, had many tears come out. So, yeah, yeah I, I really like the 49ers at this point. Steelers are my diehard team. Like, that's always okay. going to be my number one. <laughs> but 49ers have really stolen my heart as well. So those are my two favorites. At least they're in a different conference. So, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's so your favorite? What future trends uh, do you predict in fantasy football? More women playing the game. More women playing the game, but then to to go into future trends, trends besides women playing the game, I'd say more two quarterback leagues. Oh, yeah, in terms of like real fantasy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, Superflex is probably going to become the – Norm. I don't I think, think there's too, too many quarterbacks. quarterbacks right now that are like stream worthy and like you can find them on the waivers too easily. I think 
that more and more leagues are going to start going to the super, yeah, not, super flex, not two quarterbacks, where you could play a second quarterback. I also think Dynasty is going to like continue becoming sort of more and more mainstream. It's it's kind of. Like, I don't think you're right. I don't like it. Really. I hope she's not right. I don't think she's right. I think people, so there's so many people in this world that we meet that love to play fantasy football and they really, it's just about the fun of it. They don't really know much. <laughs> well, there's different all. tiers. And, there's yeah, different tiers. There are different tiers, but the majority of people oh, yeah. are people Maybe. that just draft, really not knowing what they're doing, but they like it because they play with their buddies and they have their draft and whatever. And, they, you know, they'll watch football. Um, but like, they're not, they're not doing research. They're not invested. They're not in the off season. They do not care. That's a, that's 99% of fantasy players. And I don't think that's changing all that much. I see. I <laughs> think like the more information that becomes available, the more content that becomes consumable. Like I think it gets e it like right now it's a lot easier to be an all in fan and a season or a year long fan and a year long manager, like now compared to maybe, you know, five years ago, like where it was, you know, information was less readily available and injury information, less readily available, contract information, less read, like all of that information, I think is so much easier to consume and easier to find that I do think it opens up more people that maybe don't want to have as much overall energy. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because I like Dynasty, but yeah. So. Rachel is asking, which of the rookies are you most excited about the NFL draft? Oh, okay. So um, I'm going to actually say this, especially for Rachel, because I know she's a Minnesota Vikings fan. I'm really excited for JJ McCarthy to put on a Vikings uniform because I think surprisingly, I know like, you know, the NFL chatter around JJ McCarthy has been a lot higher than I think the chatter in the fantasy community, like fantasy analysts, not overly excited about JJ McCarthy, but I loved his tape. I thought he was kind of like really sneaky athletic in a way that could translate to some sneaky fantasy upside. And if you're telling me that if he lands with the Minnesota Vikings and he's going to be throwing to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison and TJ Hawkinson when healthy. Hello. Like, yeah, I, I think yeah. he's a top 15 quarterback potentially year one. And not a lot of people like to say that um, in terms of running backs. Uh, talk Whoa, about you're not allowed to take them all. Oh, sorry. You're not to take them all. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of draft podcasts lately. So I'm like, <laughs> uh, I, I was just going to mention Jonathan Brooks only for the reason mm -hmm. that. He's going to be I such love a good him. Value. Yeah, he's going to be such a good value in drafts. It, a in the NFL draft and then also regular NFL drafts and then also fantasy drafts because he's coming off that ACL tear. Maybe he's not going to be fully ready by week 1, but we know how fast these guys recover from ACL tears. And if he did not tear his ACL, he would be the clear-cut RB1 in this class. He'd be going in the early second round. We'd be all excited about him. He'd be going so early in drafts. But now because of this ACL tear, it's going to knock him down. We're going to be able to get him for a great value. And he's an awesome player. So I'm I'm really excited about him. And I can confirm he's a very nice young man, too, because I got to interview be. him. I got to interview awesome. him at the combine. I got to ask him one question. Nice. You know, it was kind of one of those things. But he was very, very nice. So I'm, I'm on board for him. I liked him. Love yeah. that. I also love Audric Estime out of Notre Dame, who ran. But for the 2024 so season? Yes. I think Audric Estime could step in year one and be okay. like, an absolute... he could be like a Kyron Williams and be like, this, so this, these are the arguments we have at home. <laughs> this is literally our, <laughs> our 24 7. He could be like Kyron Williams, but year one. I don't these are the arguments. They are fun. <laughs> I, it's a, it's fun always a lively debate here in our house, but like, Audric Estime, like, I do think that he's going to be a huge value in dynasty rookie drafts and fantasy football in general, because he ran a 4-7-140 yard dash, which ranks in the 10th percentile for running backs. And that's bad. That's really, really bad. And not a lot of running backs who run that slow of 40 yard dashes translate to success. But like, the tape is so clean, the production profile so clean, just like put your 
your blindfolds on when you're watching the 40 yard dash. Cause I do think like the, the on the field speed better than you'd guess for a four, seven, one 40 yard dash. But he's been one of my favorite running backs here in this class that like right now I think is so vastly underrated. And JC said, I want Michael Penix in Minnesota and it won't cost him a ton. I am a Michael Ooh. Penix like Stan. I really, really like Michael Penix. But for fantasy, he doesn't he doesn't move. He his could legs. be like CJ Stroud. He is a pure pocket passer. He could I don't be like CJ Stroud. I don't think he's going to be as productive as CJ Stroud with his legs. So okay. ladies, one more one more question from me before we um we um let you go. So if you if you had to make people laugh, what would you the title of your autobiography be? Oh Lord. Oh, <laughs> I got fired carrying out. Wait, hold on. I don't know what the title would be, but it'd be something around the fact that the first job I ever got fired at, I had really nothing on my desk besides a LeBron no. James, besides a Kyrie Irving bobblehead. And I had to walk <laughs> out of my job carrying this Kyrie Irving bobblehead with my boss, you know, sh you know, showing Escorting me out. Escorting you out. And while I'm bawling my eyes out, I'm bawling my eyes out. And I just have this Kyrie Irving bobblehead so something around that title where like i got fired and all i had left was a curry <laughs> and now do you still have that do you still have the bobblehead <laughs> i wish you still had the bobblehead no i don't i don't know what happened to it but it was oh damn it. this was so long ago but it's still one of my like funniest memories to think back on just how silly I must have looked uh walking through the parking lot just bawling my eyes out with <laughs> <scary> <laughs> here. I gave up mine would be like I gave up a steady career in nursing and all I have is this sh uh super awesome freelance career <laughs> in sports like <laughs> acknowledging the total asinine decision that I made to leave like <laughs> one of the most stable careers that you could possibly have for something that is probably the least stable career that you could possibly have. Um, don't regret it, but there you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. That's awesome um, ladies. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and before, before we let you go too, um, would you guys each tell us, tell everyone where they can find you just for some reason, they don't know where to find you. Where can they go? Yeah, you can find me, Michelle Majuk, over at uh, Twitter or X at Ball Blast M, Ball Blast E M. Uh, you can find my podcast, Locked On Fantasy Football, and then also Gold Diggers. That's on the Gold Standard Network for the 49ers. And again, Fantasy Football Podcasts every single day, Monday through Friday. And then the 49ers one is on Friday. Yeah, um, I'm Kate. You can follow me on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Uh, and yeah, I do the PFF fantasy podcast every week, uh, do locked on dynasty every single day, uh, cover the Pittsburgh Steelers for behind the steel curtain, a little bit of everywhere, do some work with Yahoo PFF. So you can't avoid me. Just follow me on well, Twitter. And well, we don't I'll want to you. avoid you. As a matter of <laughs> fact, I'm going to bother you more now that I you know, bonded. We're friends now. So oh, no fans. such thing as bother. <laughs> But thank you girls again. It's, this has just been so such a great night. And thank you to all the viewers. Uh, we deeply appreciate all of our viewers who come and join us every night. We love everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure everybody give us that like button, please. It kind of makes us look like people were here. And we appreciate that because you were here. And we appreciate that. So a huge thank you once more to the Sports Affiliation for providing us this platform to share our authentic stories and experiences. We really Look forward to this every week, and we need this every week. Um, so uh, join us for the upcoming episode next week on Wednesday, April 17th. We will be having J.J. Winner. Can you believe it? How cool is that? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. It's, good. it's a whole week away. Can we just stay a little while longer? Get busy. You know, you stay. You got, you got more. Do you have more mimosas? You got, can you just get another mimosa We got Watch there? What Happens yeah. Live. Uh, Vanderpump. Yeah. Yeah, we're oh, all my goodness. Oh, my daughter watches that. Uh, but a, a special <laughs> shout out to JC. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it. I heard it's a very addicting. Yeah. Um, but thank you, JC. We genuinely appreciate you. Uh, wishing you all a good night and a continued good health. We look forward to seeing you next week. 
And at our new time, you guys are liking it so far. You're still coming to the show. We appreciate you all. Everyone stay healthy. and We'll see you next week. Thank you again, ladies. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone.